And so there's, there's a few sets of gas laws. The first gas laws are what I like to call relational. And so remember that you have four properties, pressure, volume, temperature, and moles. And so what they're gonna do, each law is gonna hold two constant, how the other two relate. How do the other two relate to each other? And so I'm gonna go through a, a series of these with the time that we have. Uh, the first one is called Boyle's Law. Uh, and these, uh, these laws go back a long time. You guys, if you want to on your iPhone, you can look up Robert Boyle and when he lived and where he was from. But basically, Boyle's Law says that volume is inversely proportional to pressure. And so this means that we're holding temperature and moles constant. Inverse relationship, if I look at, I don't know, we could have volume or pressure on either axis. Well, let's put volume here and pressure here. So if I'm keeping the other ones constant, an inverse relationship will always be a parabola like this of some kind. And so the idea is when pressure is high, like over here, then the volume will be low, right? If I have very high pressure, the volume goes down. If I have uh, low pressure, then the volume increases, this inverse relationship. And so if I take a balloon, and if I go up in atmosphere, the balloon will, as the pressure decreases, as I go up in atmosphere, the pressure decreases, the balloon will get bigger. It's gonna expand. So again, the temperature is the same, the moles are the same. If I'm to take a balloon and I go underwater, right, the deeper I go in the water, the, the water actually creates pressure very quickly. The balloon will get small. Technically, there's a, there's a relative idea for this. Uh, is anybody scuba dive? Um, but for every 33 feet, below water, you get an extra atmosphere. So at 33 feet, so on the surface of the water, you're one atmosphere. At 33 feet down, you're two atmospheres. If you go another 33 feet, that's not to scale, but then you would be at three atmospheres and so on. And that's because water is so dense. Um, if I go down 33 feet, I, I double the pressure my balloon is going to have half the volume. The same thing is true with my, my lungs, right? If, I, if my lungs, I'm not exhaling or inhaling, just holding my breath, and then that pressure, my lungs will shrink, right? Um, with, with atmosphere, it's a little bit different. If I go, so if I'm on the surface, it's one atmosphere at sea level. If I go up 10,000 feet, then I'd be at 0.5 atmospheres, right? And so going from going up to 10,000 feet, if I kept the if I kept the temperature and the moles, the number of particles in the balloon the same, the volume of the balloon would double. Pressure is proportional to one over volume. And so this is not very good for doing math with, but what we can do is we can turn that into an equality by adding a constant. Pressure is equal to a constant times one over volume. And then what they do is they solve for the constant. What's the constant equal to? So what I, to isolate K, I would multiply both sides by V. On this side, the Vs would cancel, right? And then I would get pressure times volume is equal to constant. And this, this is the beginning of Boyle's law in a mathematical sense. So if I have one condition, pressure, volume, uh, it's equal to a constant. If I, and then I go to a new situation, let's say I double the pressure. This is a new, new situation. Then the volume would go to one half. So such that the product of these is still equal to a constant, right? If I take double, so the pressure times the volume is equal to a constant. If I double the pressure and half the volume, it's still going to be equal to that same constant. If this case is equal to a constant in this case is equal to a constant, then P1 over B1 is equal to P2 
over V2. So this is the real law. This is the one that I can use at the end of the day. And so we don't have to just double and half the pressure. We can have any change to pressure. And again, this is temperature and moles are constant, right? We're not changing the temperature. We're not changing the number of particles. So if a balloon with a volume of 1.85 liters and a pressure equal to, let's put a pressure equal to 765 millimeters of mercury has the volume drop to 1.25 liters, comma, what is the new pressure? And so when I do one of these relational ones, if I recognize that there's a change, and so yes, this is a relational law. I saw that the volume changed. And so if the volume changed, then I'm gonna do a relational law. And if I'm gonna do a relational law, I wanna find all of the variables. So I'm gonna, uh, one, identify variables. And so this is, I, I basically say, what's P1, what's V1? Uh, what's P2? What's V1? What's V2? Right? I wasn't given any information about temperature and moles, so I'll just ignore those. So I'm going to say P1 was equal to, this is the pressure, 765 millimeters. Volume 1 was 1.85 liters. Volume 2, 1.25 liters. Pressure 2, I don't know. That's the new pressure. Okay, so that's my first thing I want to do is to identify variables. The second thing to do is to rearrange. So I would recommend this. A lot of people, they'll just plug the variables in and then solve. But I would actually recommend, why don't you rearrange it when it's variables? If P1, V1 is equal to P2, V2, I want to, what's P2 equal to? So how would I get P2? Divide V2 into both sides? Yes. I'm going to divide both sides by V2. That's absolutely correct. And that's my new expression. So P2 is equal to P1 V1 over V2. Now I'm going to plug in and solve. And I'm going to worry about sig figs, right? P2 is equal to P1, so P1 was 765 millimeters of mercury times V1, which was 1.85 liters, divided by V2, which was 1.25 liters. What happens to the units? Anybody? So I see that the, go ahead. Does liter, liter cancel? Yeah, the liters cancel. And then it looks like I have three sig figs for everything. So my answer is going to be three. And I get, um, well, my raw score or my, wa my raw value is uh, 1,132.2. I'm going to round that to three sig figs. So 1,130 millimeters would be my answer. That would be the, my final situation. So that's an example of doing Boyle's Law. Let's actually just conceptually look at a picture of Boyle's Law too. So let's say I have a container. I have, let's say, I don't know, these many particles. And then I shrink the volume. Okay, so now let's take the same box and we shrink the volume down here such that all the particles are down here. So it's all seven. We could just maybe just make each particle make up be a, like a mole or whatever. I don't know. But what's going to happen to the pressure if I look at this situation? What's going to happen to the pressure here? Pressure increases? Yeah. So here, there, I, I basically, here I have uh, two times the area. I have the same number of particles, but they have much more area to strike off of, right? Yeah. And here they're going to be, there's going to be a lot more collisions with the walls. Yeah. More collisions, more pressure. So if I, if I, and this, it's relational. If I half the volume, then I double the pressure, right? And that's that inverse relationship.